Hey everyone, it's Bethany. Welcome back to my craft room and thank you for clicking on this video. If you clicked on this video, by chance you are really wanting to join me in crafting for fall and let me know what you're crafting because I have, I think, seven really fun crafts today. And I'm being honest when I say I think this may be one of my favorite curated collection of crafts that I'm bringing to my channel. Everything just turns out really, really fun and fresh and I can't wait for you to see everything play out in this video as we craft. So as a reminder, down in that description box below the video I will list each craft individually and under each craft you will see a little source list of all of the materials used to bring that craft together now from time to time either because I've had a material too long or maybe I bought something way too long ago there may be something that I can't link for you but I'll try to link as much as I can fall is not only one of my most favorite times of the year but it's also one of my favorite seasons to craft for so I am ready I hope you are too let's start off this video by giving it a thumbs up if you're ready to continue seeing some fall inspiration on my craft table and I cannot wait to hear what you guys are all doing in your craft spaces as well so be sure to let me know as well okay let's go ahead and hop down to the camera and I'll show you what we're starting with on my craft table okay so to set the fun fall crafting tone I'm gonna be putting this snickerdoodle candle off to the side and I'm gonna light it and it's just gonna be so fun. So I'm going to be doing a little candle stand for my first craft. And if you remember from last year, I did a couple candle wraps with some adhesive vinyl. And on this one, I did a really fun leaf theme. So I'll link to that video if you want to start kind of binge watching last year's fall videos and catch up if you are a new subscriber or if you missed those last year because those were fun. All right. So Snickerdoodle is going to be in my craft room tonight and it's time to start crafting for fall. As mentioned, I'm gonna do this really fun stand. I found, I wanna say I maybe picked up a couple of them, but I found these at Target in their little dollar spot. Again, that little area is either $1, $3, or $5. And this, of course, was $5. My eye always goes to the $5 things because that's just the way I roll, I guess. So I went ahead and I'll be sure to link everything that I am using in terms of materials and designs down in the description box below. That way you can recreate anything that you wish. But I went ahead and found a really fun floral wreath that I thought would just be really pretty to put on the inner perimeter of this little stand. Now, you don't have to put a candle on this. You could also um, have it just be a little decorative tray. You could have it sit by your sink and put other little trinkets on it. But I thought it would be fun just for my nice fall candle. Another thing that you can do is if you'd like, you can cut out the inside of your wreath where there is a lot of vinyl. And I will go ahead and do that just so I can save some room. But I'm trying to see if I can see it. I'll probably use my X-Acto knife. Okay, I'm gonna bring in a little self-healing mat to cut on. I'm just not comfortable cutting on my glass mat. And what I'll do is just kinda eyeball it this is not going to be a beautiful circle. This is just going to be a, let's save some material circle. <laughs> and I'll just slip this into my bin of scraps. And you know, you know it's true, we always need just a little bit of vinyl from time to time. So if you have little areas like this, that aren't part of your design and you're comfortable, you know, cutting it out, go for it. Now, you're gonna see my design come to life in a moment. So you'll see exactly what I did there, but look at how much vinyl I saved. So don't be afraid to do that. You don't need little perfectly square or rectangular pieces for your cutting mat. If you wanted to, you could even just trim this down, you know, to be a little bit more manageable for a mat, but any shape will do, and it all really adds up. Okay, I am using my favorite Oracle vinyl, and it's particularly my favorite for white. And the reason is, is they very cleverly, and I mean this wholeheartedly, 
they very cleverly put it on a blue backer. And that makes all the difference when you are trying to weed a design. Okay, so I'm going to just bring this beautiful wreath to life here. And it's so pretty. It's just so pretty. I think I used something similar to this last year when making a front door sign for fall. And I'll try to link that video as well. You know, I'll probably just link my fall crafting playlist. That will be the most helpful. Okay. And just grabbing my little magnets. And getting this all weeded out. All right, so how is everyone's fall crafting coming along? I waited until, well, it was, was it last week when I posted? I waited until about eight o'clock on actual Labor Day. <laughs> and you know, once the dishes were done, kids were in bed, I thought it's officially fall season, it is time. So I posted that video and many of you were just as ready as I was. But you know, I had to wait until Labor Day because you know, Labor Day is just that final grand finale to summer. And there's something so beautiful about that. So I didn't want to rush it because I don't like rushing my holidays. But by goodness, once that dishwasher was humming, it was fall season. <laughs> Definitely didn't wait till midnight. Okay. So going through to get all of the little intricate middles of the leaves, some of the vines, I guess, is that even the right way to say it? Well, I'm saying vines, but little leaf clusters, I suppose. Some of them do have insides to weed out, but some respectively do not. So I will be skipping some of them, obviously, because they don't have middles. And that's what makes it really a pretty design is that there's just such a fun variety. Okay, final little pieces. And I think this was just a really pretty choice. And I like that the middle will be nice and hollow, allowing me to put little things on this tray without feeling guilty that I'm covering anything up. So I think sometimes, you know, having a little white space so that you can freely use something without feeling like, ooh, I'm just covering that design. I just think this will be pretty and I also think it will just very much complement in that circular shape that it is, the candle. Okay, I think I got everything. We should be good. Okay, let's get transfer tape. Okay, I think, yes, that is a great size. And then I will further trim this down just a hair so that it takes on a circular shape because that will just be easiest for the blank that I have in front of me. So laying down my vinyl, or I'm sorry, my transfer tape. Ooh. And I just went ahead and exposed, you know, a little over an inch there. And then I will pull and lay down the rest. Oh, that was pretty ideal in terms of size. Okay, grabbing my scraper, I'm going to scrape down the front and I will scrape down the back as well and we will be ready to go. Now, before I peel this up, I am going to take my scissors and I just want to go in a circular like pattern, if you will, or shape. And I'm just going to make this more of a circular shape so that it lays within my tray because it, it has a lip around the edge that I don't want to get caught on. And because I don't have, you know, it down yet, I can see, oh, that's nice. See how it, that can just easily lay there. 
Okay, so that looks great. So now what I can do is, I'm gonna just really quickly do this one more time. Perfect. And then I'm going to very slowly, because there's, there's some thin pieces there. If you need to use your weeding tool by all means. And there we go. Very gentle. I think I you I have to say I've been so busy getting content ready for this fall season for September, October, November, December. So I know coming up I well, I, I'm pretty sure I have this design being used once more in a fall video because it's just too good. And, you know, when you find a good wreath, you just find yourself endlessly inspired with it. Grabbing one little piece that has, has me working for it. Okay, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna go this way for a bit. Okay. And just nudging those little pieces. Sometimes with wreaths, when things are going in a variety of directions, this part can be Well, what should I say? Patience required. <laughs> and it's okay. It's just, there's just a lot of movement going on, right? There's a lot of directions. So you want to be careful. You don't want to rip your vinyl, but patience and you will get there. Okay. You could, of course, paint this in any way. And of course, these I'm sure are not unique to just the dollar spot. And I did get those, you know, a while ago. So you probably won't find them there right now, but just any circular little stand and this would be so fun. Okay, again, you could paint this. I really like the natural wood look with a white vinyl on it. It's just where my heart is. It's also where my personal like home design is as well. So that's why you'll see me do that from time to time on my channel. It's just because you know, obviously I'm going to share things with you that is my style. So this is definitely my style. Just simple and beautiful. <laughs> I love just, I think simple is beautiful. And that's why I use those words together. And sometimes simple is just the way to go. And that's the route I take more often than not. Okay, one little piece. Oh, a couple little pieces. I need to help kind of nudge down. There we go. Oh, already remedied. Okay, now gently, sorry for the clinking on the little mat here, gently peeling up my transfer tape. Of course, you could cut and trim this transfer tape down and reuse it. Oops, see here what's happening? So I'm gonna lay that back down. I'm just gonna do a finger press. You could bring your scraper back in, but a little finger press is all it needs and there we go, isn't that neat? I think that's pretty, so simple. And you know, in the theme of having things in my craft space I need to use, I've had this for a bit. And I just love how the white vinyl also pairs with that nice white on the iron legs. That's so pretty. Okay, so then paired with my candle here, this smells like butter. Well, not literal butter, but well, it's snickerdoodles, so I'm sure I could pick out some butter in there. But how pretty is that? I don't wanna tip my candle because of course wax, but isn't that pretty? I think that's just gonna look really nice in my kitchen. I love it. Okay, I'm gonna keep enjoying you, and I'm gonna set this off to the side, and then let's continue crafting. Okay, I just put the heat press on for a fun sweatshirt that's going to come up later. But I am going to be doing a very simple craft here. Now, in the whole theme, you know I've been doing this so much and it's so gratifying. If you've missed it though, I am shopping my craft space 
completely in 2022. Not completely, every once in a while I do need to go pick up something naturally from a craft store that I am out of, but I'm trying to shop my craft space more and more. And this I purchased, I want to say probably at Home Goods, maybe my first year that I had my channel, so probably two years ago. And had every intention to craft with it and as things do they just get tucked away in my craft room and I need to use this and I was really inspired because another little thing that I've had in my craft space is pardon the vinyl here it will be everywhere by tonight it'll be on my bare feet <laughs> so this is a cute little maple leaf it came in a bare wood I think I probably picked it up at Michael's or Joanne you know those little shapes here and there that they have and it probably was around a dollar. But I've had this for a couple years as well, wanting to do something for it. Of course, I get a little bit of fear of missing out when I'm at the craft store and I just continue to add to cart. But this year, I'm crafting with all my things. So what I thought I would do is I purchased some patterned paper that you will see me using later in this tutorial, or as I like to call it, fun crafty night video. So I found some really fun fall pattern papers that I just thought would be so fun and pretty. and. I didn't really mention it, but I'm kind of going with a, a little bit more of a soft, calm fall color palette. And I really liked the idea of using mints and this little sherbet color. I'm not a fan of orange, you know this about me, but this nice pale orange, I definitely, definitely can do that. So we're going to also be having some fun with the button press with these pattern papers later. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out one of these and I think I'm going to do the gingham. I think that will be really nice. And Bethany, did you size these correctly? I hope you did. Let me grab a tape measure. I'm just going to use my acrylic ruler. We have three and a half and I'm assuming that is the same lengthwise, three and a half. And we have, oh, golden. Okay, we're golden. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna trim. First of all, I'm just gonna trim these down. Now, I just printed these off on regular paper with my printer, nothing fancy because, well, because we're gonna be using the button press later and I didn't want super thick paper, but also because it's just gonna go in the frame. So don't waste, don't waste your nice cardstock on this. Not necessary. Okay. Now I also think this is where I'm gonna have to do, well, let's let's just trim it to size and then we'll open up. We'll open this up. Now I'm gonna save these off to the side. And let's open our little frame here. Turning over, I love frames for crafting. I'm gonna do a lot of stuff for Christmas with frames this year. Okay, now what I'm thinking is if I ever decide to omit using the glass, what I like to do is just keep the glass inside. So behind, see how I just have it there. I'm just gonna tuck my pattern right in front of it. That way, if I ever wanna reuse this frame, I have the little glass insert all ready to go. Oh, that looks so cute. So cute. Okay, so I'm gonna put that in there. I'm also going to just slip this in here. Now I did use my favorite chalk paint to paint the little leaf, just with a couple coats. And I'll link my favorite chalk paint down below. Oh, so pretty. So simple, right? So simple. And then, you know what I'm gonna do? Is I'm gonna grab some little adhesive dots or adhesive squares, and I am simply going to put this little maple leaf right in the middle here. But I wanna pop it up because I do want some dimension. That's not, I mean, that's beautiful. I love it. If you decide to do that, go for it, girl. But, or boy, but I think this is better. That little bit of dimension with the shadow just makes it look really fun. So I'm gonna grab some adhesive squares and I'm just gonna use some of my card making things it's gonna work perfect. It's going to work perfect. If you have another method that you wanna do, go for it. But I'm just gonna do this. Now I'm going to trim really quickly, just a tiny 
area for the stem. That way everything is equally lifted. That looks great. And I'll take my little backers off. So you of course could add a little bit of heat adhesive vinyl in terms of, you know, putting a little saying on front of the leaf, but you know, not everything I feel needs to have words. Um, I feel like we're really quick to add words to a lot of things, but sometimes just a simple pattern or just a shape. Like I said, I, I vote for simple and trust me, I put a lot of words on things because so many cute SVGs. Do I need to say more? But I think that this is just so simple and so pretty. And look at the little dimension. It was just so simple in terms of um, height in those adhesive squares, but I really think that just is so pretty. Okay, number two is done. I'm gonna try to keep myself super clean and organized. And let's go ahead and move on to the next craft while my heat press continues to warm to temperature. Okay, so I was at Dollar Tree the other evening and I hadn't been in a while. So I saw this really pretty pumpkin sign. Now don't mind the splatter of paint on the back. I'm turning it over because this is what it looked like originally on both sides. And then I added some chalk paint, my favorite chalk paint to the front. I think I did about two coats. And I thought it would be really pretty to spell out autumn with this really shimmery, pretty kind of, well, I think it's a shimmer vinyl. I'll try to link it and source it down below. No promises because I'm gonna say it again. I've had it for a while. So I have to remember, I, I think I need to just figure out where I purchased it from because it's been a while. So what I'm gonna do is, I know this isn't my magnetic, but I at least have some weight there. What I'm gonna do is figure out my placement. Now, because I had this in a 12 by 12 roll, and obviously this is longer than 12 inches in terms of how big I wanted my design, what I did was I got my design already just like so in design space, and then I sliced the second three letters from the first three letters. That way I could cut it like you just saw me split apart, but I could cut it like that on my mat and still use a 12 by 12 sheet of adhesive vinyl, but be able to do a longer design. So always just kind of figure out little cheats for getting longer designs out of smaller pieces of vinyl because you can totally do it. Okay, I think about there, actually I'm gonna go up a little bit. So in I think if I do about an inch and a half from the bottom, then what I'm what I'm aiming for is I want an equal distance from the bottom of this pumpkin to the top of the A and then the bottom of the N to the bottom of my sign and I think that looks really good. So I'm actually going to work from the bottom up only because I I just find it easier sometimes to do it that way and also because the little serifs on this N I think if I line those up and center those perfectly then everything else is gonna be golden. So that's what makes me feel the most confident in terms of getting this done well, but go ahead and approach it any way that you would like. Okay, I have this really random scrap piece, so I'm gonna use it and reuse it for this whole project. So cutting to size and let's get trying to get everything in camera, but sometimes it can be a tad tricky. Okay, so there. Again, I'm gonna expose about an inch to an inch and a half of my material. I find it easier than taking the backer off of the entire sticky material because if you just have a bunch of sticky, it can, can get a little overwhelming. Sorry, I'm a little tongue tied. Um, it can get overwhelming trying to get it to lay down evenly, but if you are just having to lay down one to one and a half inches of sticky, then it's so much more manageable, less intimidating, less frustrating. And you know, the goal is to keep it fun. So I'm all for that. Okay, again, scraper. I love this because it's a solid vinyl, but it has a really pretty, you know, glimmer and shimmer. And I think it's just so subtle, but 
so pretty. Okay, peeling away. Oopsie. And of course you could spell out anything. I think this font was DTC Barn Acre and it was just a Cricut Design Space font. It's one of those fonts I really like. Okay, so did I say about an inch and a half? That looks about like an inch and a half to me. Oh, I'm so sorry. Hold on. Come here. Okay, I think you can see it now. I have to go a little diagonal because I don't think I can fit it on my screen elsewise. Oh, Bethany. Okay. And again, if I am, my eye is focused down here. If I am just focusing on lining these up with the bottom plus side to side, then I think I will be golden. And I think that looks great. Okay. I think that looks really good. Hopefully, okay. Good, and then peeling this up so I don't lay it on the backer. So nice. Great, okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this over because once this transfer tape comes off, I want to immediately place it down on the next section. Okay. Oh, I love that color. It's like a mocha. It's like a mocha. It reminds me of when, I, when my husband and I got married, this was like our accent color. And it was just a, it literally was like a mocha brown and it was so pretty this is literally the color it was kind of like a mocha champagne and I know that sounds really weird but I think you know what I mean right it's like a mocha color but it was a shimmery mocha Ugh, I don't oh it was perfect okay It would, and it's just like me to have like a very, <laughs> very calm and neutral, I guess, color, even, even back when we got married. Jeez, I would, like you could, you could even see it back then. My aesthetic was just simple. Okay. Now I'm focusing on the T and the U and I want to make sure that my alignment, you know, I'm matching my spacing. Okay, and I think that looks good in terms of spacing. So I am going to place that down. I think that looks really good. I'm not mad about it. Okay, that was easier than I thought. Okay, here we go. Gentle. And goodness, for a dollar twenty-five, at least in our area, we're at a dollar twenty-five now at the Dollar Tree. I happily give my extra quarter because I think they have super fun stuff, and it keeps. Listen, an additional quarter still keeping my crafting costs much more manageable. How pretty! Okay, let me do it this way. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I think it's really cute. Let me grab. I took out the little rope so that I didn't get any paint on it, but I'm gonna put that back in just so you can get the full look. Okay, so this was Crafter's Square wood plaque, and I just loved the little pumpkin cutout. Now, of course, you could get super fancy schmancy with this. You could do multiple colors. You could do, you know, add some leaves, but I'm gonna keep it simple because that's what I like, so. I think that's really fun. I actually might give this to a friend. In fact, I think I will. Okay. Pushing those through and we're done. There we go. How cute. And I love just the really simple kind of burlap cord. I don't even know. That's, I mean, obviously it's not burlap, but just like the twine kind of cord there. So simple and pretty.
Okay, I really like that. So fun. So if you are near a Dollar Tree, head on in and see if they have this little blank still. You could also definitely do this for Halloween as well too. So you could definitely run in any direction. Okay, again, I was really drawn to more of this just light mint or green color. I thought it also looks really good, bringing back my paper. I really like the look of that sherbet with a mint color. So I'm kind of going with that color scheme for fall. So again, dollar spot at Target. This one was $3. I picked this up around summertime, but I love, I love it for all year round, really. I mean, you can't go wrong with a nice green. In fact, if you even wanted to do this for winter, you could put snowflakes on it because this green minty color is really popular in the winter time as well. So lots of fun things that you could do with this. I will grab my rubbing alcohol spray bottle. And what I'm gonna do is just clean off the surface. I'm doing a very simple design. And we're just keeping it very minimal, but I think it's gonna turn out really pretty. So cleaning this surface area, making sure there's no oils from my hands or dust from my craft room and or the store shelves <laughs> that will interfere with laying down my vinyl. And there we go. Having my little design and weeding tool. Okay, so what I did here was I have um, a really fun fall bundle that I purchased last year that my eye every year goes back to this bundle. I love it. It's got so many cute little SVGs. I'll link it down below as always. But they have this little maple leaf and it's so simple. It is so simple, just how I like it. And, oh, I'm making a mess here. Um, what I thought would be fun is to kind of oversize the maple leaf for my pot and then chop it off. Okay, now you can definitely do it with a paper trimmer if you'd like. I just sliced it in design space and once I get this finished here for such a simple design my goodness i'm really kind of making this hilarious am i not okay okay i don't even know what i'm doing here leave it to me to make a simple something something be all messy okay first of all scraps gone and Surgery time. Time to scrub in. Okay. A couple pieces need to lay back down, but then I'll explain what I was doing here. Okay, I think I got that. And honestly, doing vinyl surgery, I love it because if I could, I would be a doctor, but I'm afraid of blood. <laughs> and you know, that's, that's kind of a deal breaker. So I, I could never live out my dream of being, actually, I just want to be like a nurse, you know, but still that's even more, you know, I couldn't. So what I did here was I took my maple leaf and then I sliced off this little top area because I thought it'd be fun to kind of have an oversized leaf just wrapping around here and taking the shape of this cute pot, right? So I'm going to trim down my transfer tape, reusing as much as I can and scrape down. Okay, I'm gonna try to link this candle for you because, oh my goodness, it's a gift from above. It smells delicious. Okay. And you know, is there anything better than just quiet crafting? Well, I'm not really being quiet because I get to visit with you all, but um, you know, just some crafty time with a nice candle. Okay, lining up my little maple leaf here. 
Okay, I wanted it to kind of be with the top of that. And I think that's so neat. Now you could replicate this and have a variety of them and just continue to wrap them around the pot. But I like the idea of just doing one and having it kind of sliced off. I just, I thought it was really cool. So that's kind of where I ran with this one. Okay, I'm gonna scrape that down. I think I, I think I did that pretty well. There's only a gentle curve, so it, it really took the shape of this planter really nicely. Dare I say bubble free. Goodness, I love that. I think that is so simple. And I kind of envision it kind of like this, looking at it head on kind of like this. You know, I wouldn't, I mean, that's still pretty, but I kind of like the idea of it just kind of like wrapping. Let's see from this side too. I like this because you can see the stem and you can really kind of tell what it is. But I think that's fun. It's simple, it's fun. And again, a fun design that you don't have words on. So another little idea and another little blank in my craft room that is decorated and ready for fall. Ooh, let me just check. Nope, it's perfect. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to our next little craft. I really love a cozy sweatshirt, especially in the fall. It's one of my favorite things. And lately I have been really enjoying the idea of experimenting more with patterned iron-on or patterned vinyl. And I feel like you've really seen me do that a lot recently. So one of the things that I have voiced is that I really love using pattern vinyl or patterns in general on shapes. I think it's a really easy way to use your patterns and it's really a fun way to dress up a shape, right? So, you know, you could do a little elephant with pattern vinyl on it, so cute. In this case, I did a pumpkin. Now you've seen me use this pumpkin before and I believe you'll probably see me use it at least once more on my fall little playlist that was, is gonna be playing out for you this fall season, but how pretty is that? So I have this really fun sweatshirt and I thought it would be fun to simply have a cute little pumpkin on it. Now I wanna kind of angle it so that, do you see how this is a V right here? I want to see if this can naturally kind of just tuck right there because then I think this would be too low. So if I do that, I think we will probably still be pretty centered and good to go. Okay, I'm going to take off, it looks like I have some tape here and I'm going to take that off and my heat press is at 340 degrees for 30 seconds. Then I'm gonna peel off my liner and I'll give it just a little bit of additional heat just by placing or covering my iron on once more. So that's the process. Let's go ahead and head over to the heat press. I'm also going to, oh, that's pretty. I'm also going to put a little lint roller over the surface of this. I do pre-wash mine. I don't have a shop or anything. I don't sell my things. I just craft for myself and my family. I personally prefer to have everything pre-washed before I put iron on on them, but go ahead again, do whatever you would like. This would also be super pretty on a gray sweatshirt too. In fact, that would be super, super cute, but I don't have a gray sweatshirt and this is just gonna be so cute and fun for fall with some cute, Denim skinny jeans, oh, love it. Okay, let's get this pressed on. Okay, that turned out super cute. I love it because it's simple. And again, I think paired with some boots and some um, 
cute little skinny jeans. This would be just so fun. I just, I, I love it. It's so, so cute. And I'm trying to get the whole thing in here so you can see that, that placement was actually really good. I like it. So again, if you are kind of scratching your head on how to use patterned vinyl, always look at shapes. And another reason why is because shapes usually have a lot of surface area that can showcase the pattern. Does that make sense? Sometimes people want to put pattern vinyl, myself included, on letters. And if you think about it, when you put it on things that are too small or too intricate, then you lose a lot of the pattern, right? Because there's not a lot of area for the pattern to be. So I think that shapes and just fun things like that are a really easy way to get inspired with your patterned iron-on or patterned vinyl. All right, let's go ahead and move on. We are officially halfway through. And I think what I will do next are some cute little cutting boards that I was really inspired by for this fall. Okay, as always, Target dollar spot gets me every time. This was in a pack of two and they are just little mini cutting boards. And I thought these would be super cute for decorating a tiered tray or having in the kitchen area. I will obviously not be using them with vinyl on them, but and I say that because vinyl is not food safe. However, I will be using them for decor purposes only. Okay, so I did a couple things here. So what I decided to do was on one cutting board, I'm gonna write fall because my second cutting board is going to be patterned only. And I thought it would be really fun and I, I think it's the right design choice to, if you have something that's full of pattern, that you pair it with something with writing. It makes sense to me, it's how I like to decorate. So that's how I'm gonna, um, that's why I approached it this way. So I did fall, and I, again, I think this was that DTC Barn Acre font from Cricut Design Space. And I thought this would be really fun. I wanted to really fill the body of the cutting board with it. For this one, what I did was I purchased a really fun print and I think I duplicated it a couple times and I'm gonna have to focus because if not, I will absolutely have a boo-boo. It's a tad intricate, but it's going to be absolutely worth it should my idea here actually work. But I duplicated it a couple times to create, you know, a long, Okay, sorry, focus, focus. A nice long pattern that would span across my cutting board. Now for this, I wanted it to span across the handle at the top plus the body of the cutting board. Whereas with the fall one that I just showed you that will accompany it, that I just wanted on the body. Okay, I'm gonna speed this up because I will not be able to, <laughs> as I'm very, very annoyingly demonstrating, I, I'm, I can't, I can't chit chat and, oops, I can't chit chat and focus at the same time for this one. And it's so delicate that I wanna do it right. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, there we go. And boy, do I wish that I could work in fast motion like you saw, but I was just over here peeling and praying. <laughs> and that's just the truth of the matter. But patience and patience pays off. Okay, wow, I love it. Okay, so again, I believe the original design 
You want to stick everywhere, don't you? The original design was here, right? A square. And so I duplicated it, welded it together because I really wanted it to, to span across the entire board. I think this is going to be really cute. Famous last words, but I really do. I really have confidence in this. So now a lot of vinyl will get wasted here, but you know, sometimes that's the name of the game in order to get the look you're going for. So I'm going to be unapologetic about that for, for this, but I'm not going to waste transfer tape. So there we go. So I'm going to lay this transfer tape over and I think, oh, that just fit like a glove meant to be. Okay. I'm going to do the easy one first because you know, sometimes you start easy to build your confidence that way when the more challenging one comes along, you're ready to go. Okay. And there we are. Okay. First little board lining this up, trying to minimize the cling. And to me, that looks great. Okay, so we have fall. Okay, and then I'm gonna need a larger piece of transfer tape. So cute. Love that. Simple, simple, simple. And I think simple is best when going with something busier, right? At least that's, that's how I usually approach that. So put that to the side. I'm going to grab a bigger piece of transfer tape. Okay. Another secret to success is when approaching a little bit more of a stressful craft, which, I mean, this isn't going to be stressful. It's just going to take a little bit of thought for a second. But clean your space really quickly. And I'm going to pretend that that's cleaning my space. But actually, behind the scenes, I'm always kind of tossing things in the, the trash that need to go to the trash or organizing because it really just does keep me focused and calm so I can continue creating, right? Let me know if you're like that too. Do you just kind of let it... Let all the chaos go and clean up later, or do you have to clean as you craft? I, I kind of can be both ways though. Sometimes I just let it all go crazy. And other times I take the time in between crafts to just really get it all buttoned up. But you know, it's, it's sometimes a little bit of both and that's okay. It all gets done in the end, right? And last one. Okay. Here we go. I'm trying to think. Okay. Let's first get this all peeled up. Step one. Peel off the liner. And while I'm peeling it off, maybe I'll get a good game plan for how I want to approach this. Now, the, the whole goal, as you can see, this is sized too big. I oversized this because I wanted it to be um, I wanted to have enough because a lot of these pieces were, are going to fall off the edge, if you will, and I'm going to trim them. You'll see in a minute, but if you're going to attempt something like this, oversize your design with the intention of trimming it down. It's going to look really neat. I really hope so. Okay. That was great. And my idea here. Okay. I'm just going to do it. I'm not going to explain. I'm going to let the visual explain it all because sometimes when I start explaining them, I mess, I mess up my focus. So I want it to be, and I'm going to focus on putting, making sure a lot of the design falls onto the board, right? So I think final answer there. I'm just going to lay it down. Okay. Lay it down. So cute. Okay. Let me get my little self healing mat because I'm going to do a little trimming. 
Bringing in my self-healing mat. Whoa. And going the other way now. Actually, you know what I'll do? I will burnish down. Okay. Oh, I really like the placement here. Oh, and I love how the design goes up on the handle. Okay, turning around. True control knife. And I'm focusing on the areas that have vinyl because everything else can just come up and I don't really need to worry about, you know, trimming all the way around. I mean, I certainly could, but I'm just trimming the vinyl pieces. Okay. And be careful not to cut into your wood. Oh, cute. I'm feeling good about this. Actually, that needs to go a little closer. Okay. And then, finally... There and there. Okay, I feel like that's where we stopped. So then when you peel it away, all those little areas are peeled off. They're already cut, right? It's so good. Oh my gosh, one little spot that I didn't cut, but oh my goodness, how cute. Let me turn that around and just trim that. Must've just missed it. Oh, I can see I kind of just missed it. Okay, that was easy peasy. I really like this. Clean that off, put this away. Okay, so I think they're gonna be so cute next to each other. How cute. Again, a tiered tray, even just kind of nestled up, you know, resting on your backsplash or whatever in your kitchen. I think that's so fun. I really like it. We're on a shelf, it's just so cute. Oh, so simple, but so cute. Okay, let's do, let's see. We have two more crafts to go. And I think, well, let's bring out the button press and then we're going to sublimate a mug with the Cricut mug press. All right, let's keep going. Okay, so have I mentioned how much I love my button press? I love my button press. It is so fun and it took me, well, you know, it took me over a year to open up the box, but you know, that's okay. Better late than never. So I'm going to, I'm going to use the medium size in terms. So let me move to the side so that we focus on the mat here. So we have the base for cutting. So you'll have your cream bases. You have your cutting die, okay? So this all goes together. And then we have our little pressing bases that actually create the button. So the medium size I think is gonna be perfect. What we're gonna do here is we're going to make magnets. And I think I'm looking, I was looking at all the sizes and I really think that this is the perfect size for a little fridge magnet. I think it's so fun. You could also go the, with the small size even smaller, but because I wanna showcase some of these patterns, I want it to be big enough to showcase a lot of the pattern, right? So I didn't wanna to go too small. So what I have here is I have the little medium size ones, and I'm going to, I'll get those organized in a second. I also have some magnets, and then I have my pattern paper, of course. Now, again, this was digital paper that I purchased and then printed out just on my printer. So because I already cut into this, what I'll do is I, I do want to showcase this gingham that I used earlier. And this doesn't have to be any fancy cutting or anything because we're going to let the die do all of the cutting. But what I will do is I'm just going to trim these apart and I'm going to trim these fairly small. So see when you use the little die, you can kind of get an idea for where your pattern's going to be. Now this is a repetitive pattern, of course, so it's not going to 
you know, make you scratch your head wondering where to place the die. But it gives you an idea of how much paper to cut, right? Okay, perfect. And this though, this one's helpful because you know, you could see which pumpkins you want to use. And I kind of like, see, I kind of like, let me bring this up a little bit. I kind of like something like that where you get all the colors, most of the colors. Let's see. Or even, you know what? I like that. Do I? I don't know. It's okay, Bethany. You can be, I like that trying not to be indecisive but you know this is the moment to be indecisive just let your let yourself take a moment to decide what you really want you don't want to regret it I mean it's a fridge magnet that's the, these are important things right I'm kidding but I mean you know looks great so let's go ahead and we have all of our pattern paper this will all be in one step let's get our buttons ready now sorry for the crinkling but I want to get all of the layers ready to go so I'm gonna need four of each oh the vinyl is real it's everywhere okay so we need four of the buttons Oop. oh magnet is for real okay four buttons and four backs. Now, again, I will, actually, as, as I go, I'll take these little clips off because these are the button clips, right? But we don't need these because later we will attach a magnet to the back. So let me get these all arranged. So I'll get four of the backs minus the little, oh, that is a stinker. Okay, minus the little pin. And then I'll get four pieces of the Mylar. And those are all included in your little button kit. Okay, so I am gonna very quickly go through the creating of the little buttons, if you will, because, and I call them buttons because later we'll transform them by adding the magnet into the magnet, right? So I do have a whole tutorial on how this mechanism works, and I'm going to refer you to that if you need to really understand all of the sandwiching layers. Of course, I'm gonna chit chat through it but if you need a little bit more help then go ahead and watch that video I show you a lot of different projects that you can do with this okay so the button base here I'll link that video up in the corner by the way as well and then or I'm sorry the die cut base is there and then I'll put the top here okay first what we're going to do is while this is all assembled again this little cream set of bases are going to go with the little die, right? Okay, so on the other side, there is a little area here where the die is down below, the kind of the blade, if you will, and so that's going to cut your paper. So what I'm gonna do really quickly is I'm just gonna hover over where I want it, then I'm gonna place, whoa, I'm gonna place my paper and my die, place it inside, rotate it in, and then press down. Press down really good, and that should, cut it really nice oh just about oh I might need to just trim with my scissors I can see the line this really is not this is completely user error it's not anything to do with the mechanism I just have zero muscle plus my craft desk is really high I like to stand while I craft so I don't have a lot of um because it's so high I can't put a lot of my body weight into it if you will too much information okay and I like again that okay I'm gonna try to really get some muscle in there okay 
There we go. And I will just continue cutting out the rest. And final one. I love these tones for fall. The mints, kind of more pastel. And that, you know, nice muted orange. Oh, I did. Oh, well, it spoke too soon. It's just, it's, I really gotta, I gotta get back on my Peloton. <laughs> Honestly. I am just a little wimpy. Okay, so taking out my little bases with my die cut. This is all done because this is only for cutting. So those can go bye-bye. And then I'm going to put and install my top and bottom in. And you want to make sure you have the correct size. So the mint is the medium. And so I'll go ahead and just install those in. So the top. And it does say, and again, in my full-length tutorial about this press, you'll really, really get a good handle on how to use this, but it says top and base. So you'll know which one goes which, right? You also will see A and B, right? So you'll wanna remember that because we're gonna always be lining those up, okay? So, the line and there we go. Okay, the first thing we want to do is we're gonna build our little button. So I like to hold this up just so you can really see. So the first thing we want to put inside is we wanna put the little button and our pattern paper and our mylar, okay? And that's just gonna give it that nice shiny look, right? So button, paper, mylar. Place it in, and then we're gonna make sure we're lined up to A. Okay, A and A. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a little bit more explaining on the first one, then I'll zoom through the last three. But do you see how we have an arrow here? Arrow and an arrow, and then we have A all the way down. Does that make sense? Okay, so now that they're all lined up, we can press down. Okay, and then it's a little magic show. That little sandwich that you did with the button and the paper and the mylar, it will go up into the top here. Okay, and now we're going to put our back side in. So the back of the button is going to go this way. So I'm going to show you. There's two sides, right? The smooth side and then kind of the rough side. You want the rough side up. Put it in there and it doesn't really matter about alignment right now because we are just gonna place a magnet on the back, right? So it doesn't matter how you line it up. Just put it in there for this project at least. Okay, and then I do have it all with B lined up now. B is the second part. So we have the arrow, B, B arrow, all lined up and press and then we have our little button how cute is that now again it doesn't matter directionally you know how you put that last piece in because we're just going to place a magnet oh they're stuck on the back Ooh, I, I am gonna glue that but it's obviously magnetizing there but isn't that cute okay so I will set that off to the side cute oh and it's like magnetizing to my magnetic map okay I'm gonna zoom through the other three so I'm gonna go ahead and switch my base to a I'm going to do button paper mylar and you could see how you could just as long as you have all your materials prepped and then everything out and ready to go you know like in their little zones you could see how you could very much zoom through this right It'd be so fast. You could make these in bulk and just have a huge assembly line and make it so easy. B, B, and press. Okay, and another one's done. So easy. Okay, A, and A. 
and then we have button, paper, mylar. All the A's are lined up for the first press. And you can always remember that because A comes first in the alphabet, right? So A goes first. And then you have, sometimes I have to kind of think about what goes next, but then you kind of just can really enjoy it. Oh, sorry for the noise. My sublimation printer is self-cleaning right now. My kids call my printer um, the spooky printer because it'll just, you know, it, it'll turn on to do its little cleaning cycle and then they just think that it's spooky because it does that. <laughs> and I'm like, no, it's very smart. Mommy paid for it to be very smart. Okay, there we go. A, I'm just gonna line up B's and there we go. Very cool. Okay. Such a good gift for fall, right? Creating a little, I'm just gonna take all these out. I also need to kind of wash, got a little bit of gunky gunk on my machine. Not sure how. Okay, no problem. Okay, so very fun way to make a little coordinated set for the front of your fridge. And it's simple, right? But it's a piece of decor, right? It's it's a simple little area in your home that you can add a little seasonal touch to. Okay, I'm gonna plug in my hot glue, let that heat up and then we will finish these off. And then let's sublimate a mug. That is good. So, turning these all over. How are we doing? Let me know if you're still watching. This has been so fun lately to see all of our little fun emojis. So let's see, what are we gonna do this time? Just a little dab of glue. Let's do the maple leaf emoji. Find it on your keyboard and if you're still watching, put a little, or just a leaf in general, put a little leaf down in the comment section. Oops, I really messed that one up. Let me, hold on. And hopefully, hopefully hot glue works here. I also have that E6000, but I've never used it. I have never, never used it. So, oh, these are so cute. I just love it. Okay, and one and two. There we go. One, two. Oh, these are gonna be so cute on my fridge. I love this. Okay, teacher gifts. This is a wonderful teacher gift. Um, what other things could you do? I mean, you could, you could make these for anybody, but wonderful, wonderful idea. You know what would be really cute? I wonder if I should do this. It would be really cute as a gift to make someone a year's worth of seasonal magnets, right? Like January could be snowflakes and something like that, right? And then February could obviously be hearts and kind of pink theme. And you could just go through all the holidays. And then, I mean, maybe you only did two per year. So you, or I'm sorry, per month. So then you would be doing 24, which would be so easy. You just saw me do four in no time at all. And I think that would be really fun. You could just have little seasonal magnets and that would be a really fun gift for someone, right? They just have to switch out their magnets, especially someone, you know, um, it could be fun for like someone in college too, because they don't have much room to decorate usually in the little dorm, but usually you have a little mini fridge, right? Anyway, I think these are really fun. Now, of course, they're going to magnetize themselves, but I'm going to put these right on the fridge. I think these are super cute and a very easy way to decorate. Okay, plugging in my mug press and I thought it'd be fun to make a really fun mug. You gave me a bunch of book suggestions in my last video. Some of them I had read and 
totally agree that those were amazing books and some of them I had not. So I created a little list. So I thought it'd be fun to just make myself a really fun mug for fall season, right? Book, candle, hot coffee, and a blanket. Oh my gosh, that sounds so good right now. Okay, I am going to do sublimation. Quick little reminder here. Sublimation requires that you use a blank that can be sublimated on. So you cannot just use any Dollar Tree mug or any mug from the grocery store. This needs to be a sublimation blank. So I have one right here. And then what I did was I printed out my design. Now I purchased this really fun floral pumpkin fall, um, like digital art, I guess you could call, because I placed all of these individually. And some of them are going to turn glittery, which I'm really excited for. Now, what I did was I printed it on my sublimation printer. So I have sublimation paper here, printed with sublimation ink on my sublimation printer. Lots of sublimation words, right? But I'm trying to very much relay that, you know, this isn't normal paper with normal ink in a normal printer. This is not a normal mug. It's all a specialty thing, right? So I have this all printed out. Now it's very muted right now and that's normal. So when you print out your sublimation design with your printer, your sublimation printer, you'll have very muted tones and then it will take the natural tone or the intended colors of your original design once it is heated, okay? So what I need to do first is I need to trim down my design. So I made sure just to size my design in Sawgrass Creative Studio so that it would fit on my mug. And I have a little bit of a taller mug because I like a little more coffee. Okay, and I'm just going to trim down my design and there we go okay so again I'll link this down below but all these little pieces were individual parts and I just placed them where I wanted them so I had some obviously coming off the edge and being cut off because I like that look and then it's just going to create one endless pattern right so now I have my mug and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some heat resistant tape and I'm waiting for this to turn green to let me know it's ready but it's it's warm I'm going to get some heat resistant tape and also my lint free cloth and we're going to prep the mug and get everything placed on it so it's ready to go into the mug press so lint-free cloth. The reason I like to use a lint-free cloth as opposed to a lint roller, you can use a lint roller, but I can already see at an angle smudge marks from my fingers. So I don't, I don't feel confident that a lint roller is going to remove smudges, right? But a lint-free cloth absolutely will. So my go-to is the lint-free cloth, but approach your project any way you'd like, but you wanna make sure that your surface is free of any lint plus oils, you know, and any smudges, because you don't want anything to interfere with your design transferring over to your mug. And if you do have lint on the surface, it can create these little blue dots. So you just wanna make sure that you're taking this really important step to clean and prevent those little blue dots from appearing. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to place my mug upside down and making sure that this is placed in the correct direction so that, you know, I'm gonna place this upside down because my mug is upside down, but I'm gonna wrap it around my mug just like this. But I need to bring my heat tape in. Now you heard the chime, it's green, so it's ready to go grabbing heat resistant tape. Make sure that the tape you're using, if you're using an adhesive to hold your design down, make sure it is heat resistant because you don't want it to melt and ruin your press or your project. So I'm gonna grab a couple pieces, set one or two to the side here, and I'm just gonna wrap. Again, making sure, and also making sure there's no lint on my paper. I'm gonna wrap this around. And I like to stand it up with the handle facing myself because then I can make sure, whoops, I have things flying everywhere. Okay, then I can make sure 
that it's lined up really nice, right? I can visually see that if those little ends of my paper are the same equal distance away from my handle, then I'm going to have it lined up. Also, it's easy to see and line up my, my design on the bottom. I think that looks great. So once I have it where I would like it, I think I need to shift it just a little bit. These would make really cute teacher gifts. Gifts for anybody, but. Okay, so I tape one side and then what I do is I kind of let that fall and then I really, really press to wrap, okay? taking my time. If it doesn't feel like it's aligned, I redo it and then tape. That way it's really tight. Oopsie, it kind of felt like it wasn't. So I'm going to re-roll and press down. Okay, there we go. So now we have our design ink side toward the mug, right? Perfect. Now I'm going to grab more heat resistant tape. I have seen people tape all along the top and the bottom. I've never felt a need to do that. If you want to, you can, but I personally haven't felt that to be necessary for my experiences with it. So I don't. Three pieces of butcher paper comes next. I'll link the butcher paper that I like to use for sublimation down below. And I just cut it to size. So one, two, and three. And what this is going to do is it's going to protect the inside of your press because some of the ink could blow out. And if it does, no worries, but you want it to be caught by the butcher paper and not by the inside of your press. If you do get sublimation ink on the inside of your press or on your heat press, then it could transfer over to your next project and or ruin your your machine. So just take this precaution and add the layers of butcher paper. Okay. I like to go kind of at an angle so that the pieces of paper don't snag when inserting it into the mug press, but I'm just going to insert, make sure my handle is even in there. And there we go. Press down. Okay. Making sure that my design is lined up where the mint area is because that's where the heat is if that makes sense then you'll see these little dots and lights there's five in total and it will just keep progressively lighting up as it's cooking for lack of a better word and then it'll be done now sublimation can be fragrant and so you want to make sure you're in a well ventilated area you can open up a um out side door, outside window, just get a nice breeze, but make sure you're in a well ventilated area when doing sublimation. So I'm going to be in my craft room, but I love saving sublimation until the end, especially during the mug press, because it takes a little bit of time, which allows for me to clean up my space. That way, when my last craft is done, I can turn the lights off and know that I have everything all perfectly clean. All right, I'm going to go clean. This is going to bake. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, it is all done. So you'll see they're flashing. You just want to open up the little lever, which opens this up as well. And then you can take out your mug. And you'll see a little discoloration. Don't worry about it. It's totally fine. And you're going to want to wait until it's completely cooled. So don't do as I'm about to do right now, but I want to see what it looks like. So I'm just going to be very careful. You just want to be mindful not to burn your little fingers because this is so hot coming off. So, oh goodness, I'm going to have to make a few of these. Okay. Stop it some more. This is so good. Look at the colors. Oh my gosh. It's so pretty. Being gentle, being mindful. Okay, grabbing the last of it. Oops. And peeling off. It's so pretty. 
I love the florals and the pumpkins. And then can you see kind of the gold? This is gonna be kind of like a gold look. It's kind of more of a glittery texture in terms of the look. And it has those on the stems. The stems are all kind of that glitter texture. I just think this is so pretty. And you can be gentle with yourself on how you arrange, right? Because you're always gonna look at one side first, right? When we were looking at the design as a whole and when you're designing it, you are looking at a flat area, right? But you're never gonna see all of this at once on here. So be gentle with yourself because you're only gonna see you know, a couple sides at once because I was just stressing so much. I was thinking, okay, do I have too many oranges next to each other? Did I put, you know, the right color distribution around? But look, in the final one, your color distribution is going to be perfect, right? It's so cute. I love it. So I hope this was inspiring that you can create a really fun seasonal mug. And I hope it was inspiring that you can have fun with different colors and tones when creating your own fall decor. That is just too cute. I cannot wait till tomorrow morning because this is definitely going to happen. Okay, <laughs> this is super fun. I really, really like seeing everything come together in the end because I'm designing things one by one when I am trying to put my video together and my decor together for the season. And it's so nice to see everything curated and come together at the very end. So I really hope you enjoyed this. I really love that I am finally getting a good use out of my patterned vinyls and I really love this look. Again, I think this is just going to be so simple and sweet for fall. And then I love this. I did go ahead and blow out my candle, but I think this is going to be a very, very cute little candle stand. I think it's just going to be so pretty and neat. And you know what? This doesn't really scream fall. It doesn't necessarily have to scream fall. You could definitely keep this out year round and just change out your seasonal candle or diffuser. And also I am really loving the mug. I love all of it, but I love how the mug turned out. It's so pretty. And I just think it, it's just nice and calm and I don't know, just the tones are just right up my alley. I'm still having it cool on this mat because it does take a little while. Then we have the cute but simple little pieces of decor in terms of fridge magnets. And then I love how these are so se separate from one another, excuse me, but they complement each other really well. I think this is really, really cute. And I feel like you could really do so much with this idea, right? Having a pattern and then maybe a sentiment on one. I think it's just really, really fun. Of course, we kept it really simple with the really sweet maple leaf. And again, we replicated another maple leaf on this really nice planter. And then of course, the really cute autumn sign, which I think turned out so, so sweet and fun. I just love it. So I hope this was fun to watch. Be sure to give this a thumbs up if you were inspired in any way, or if you really just enjoyed sitting back and watching a little craft session come together. I really had fun putting this together and I believe I have one more fall video coming. Plus I have a lot of fun little card making videos sprinkled in. I'm really hoping to do one Cricut video a week and one card video a week because that is just where my heart is at. I am super, super inspired in both areas right now. And it's really important to me that if I'm finding an area that's really inspiring to me that I allow myself the grace to run with that. So you're gonna see a couple different things from me in the months ahead, but I'm going to tap into both of my loves each week, and I hope you enjoy all of the fun content that is coming your way. All right, everyone, let me know which one was your favorite. Don't forget to leave your little leaf emoji down in the comment section if you've made it this far, which I know you have, because so many of you are just the cutest and loyalest little crafty followers. I love it. All right, everyone, I will see you all in the next video, and get crafting in your craft room too, and let me know what you're crafting. All right, bye.